Today is May 20, oh god, 7th, 28th. I know it's the Saturday before Memorial Day of 2017. How's it going, internet? Today, well, hopefully this weekend, we shall be packing the rest of these, which I am doing, going to get into right now. That shall be patched. I got our angle iron in. I'm not sure if I put that in the last video, but we got it. It's a little heavier duty than we requested, but that is quite perfectly okay. Five and a quarter inch steel. That is going to go on the bottom. It's going to lay across. This board is going to be wedged in between the floor. And this lip where the seats sit the bolted onto. And that's gonna push, take the tension off this. Because this is buckling really bad. And we got patchwork that nearly I just sprayed for this. This is gonna go along the corner of the wall. And that's gonna go against the wheel well. Trying to do a lot today as much as we can. I mean, more than in reality, I'll probably get these small things done today. And hopefully, I'm going to paint. These are going to get painted about two of them today. Hopefully, that paint will dry by later on. And I don't know, we're getting there. I wanted to get this done by June 1st, but June 1st is in three days, and that's just absolutely not happening. And for people, I'm just going to say the way I do things is not at all the right way, the slightest. There's multiple ways of doing things. If you want to do it prim and proper, I guess you could call it. You could cut out those holes, make it nice and square, and then weld a new piece onto it. Not us. We just... And this is where I fucked up. This is what I recommend if you do what we do. Get a sander. I don't have my sander out here. But get like a sand, a sanding wheel with maybe 64 grit sandpaper on. Sand, this is what I started. Sanding the area around it, getting all this loose stuff off. It still looks like there's some to come off. I didn't finish here. Sand that down. Get all the sh shit out of there. Sweep it up real good. Uh, then you could arguably, once all that is done, once the whole floor is sanded, one can argue that you should seal it with some kind of sealer, like Rust-Oleum or some other rust converter paint. You know, something to put on top to keep the surface rust from rusting. Or, you could be the dummy I am, and not seal what's underneath, and just spray it with bed liner. Spray on bed liner. Spray that up good. Then put your patch on, and then we patch. We get a shitload of silicone. We do. Uh, I think it's good. The lighting in here glows today. Do layer silicone around then we do another circle and another one and what that does is two things number one if water comes in it can't penetrate that first layer and if it does penetrate the first layer it then has to go through a second layer and it also acts as a glue to hold your patch down and then we just use pop rivets so I hope that was not as confusing as it probably was but there's all kinds of ways of doing things we got a lot of this metal for free some of it was laying around you know whatever so this is the before and hopefully 
by the end of today we will have a halfway to an after. For example, here is the silicone. So by the front. Hope you can see a bead around, secondary bead. I put up the seal, um, the seal up the seam, you know, where the stuff meets. And I shall now cover this up. This hole was small enough, I cocked a shitload into the actual hole and I put around it as well. Okay, now we put down the patch. This is actual recycled bus that we're using. This was heater hoses ran all along this wall. This was what was on the outside. Putting the riffles here, which I pounded down with a steel hammer on my Polish anvil over there, which is a piece of I-beam behind those two buckets. <laughs> Thanks, Grandpa. And I'm putting these ruffles in the middle. I don't know if I can get this real. All right, I gotta put this down so I can stamp this in here real good, but that's how that's gonna go in there. Normally, I spray the back side of this, but since I'm kinda wanna get this the hell done, Today, if I can, I'm just going to rivet it down and then spray the back side. And what I have here are rivets, aluminum ones. Uh, Dad got these from his place, from his work. They are, I'll be honest, they're pretty fucking shitty, but they get the job done. And yes, you use, oops, sorry. If you use steel. You should use steel on steel. Like this floor is steel. This should be steel, and these rivets should be steel. But since they're aluminum versus steel and aluminum, that they will erode. I believe at a faster rate. Don't quote me on that. It's what we had. We looked a little bit for big rivets and we didn't find any in our local stores and then you always remember after the fact there's a such thing as Amazon and the internet so maybe they're on there I still never looked because it's kind of too late but nonetheless you should use steel on steel on steel I mean I just need this bus to last me until I move out of this house and hopefully have a nice carport and or enclosed garage to keep this and it should be lasting a long time okay i'll start oh yeah and what we do now we have our drill i'm using a quarter inch drill bit we're just going to drill some holes and pop those bastards in place okay i got two holes drilled Numero one, numero two. And then what we do, what I do, get one of these. See this extra silicone? I'm gonna put a little bit around it, that's good. And oh god, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. <laughs> uh, push down. That down in there. Same thing in the back. And then just pop it down. Silicone puts a little bit of seal around that. Alright.
today is well, today is June twenty sixth. Twenty sixth, I think so. So fast forward quite some time. Uh, oh, we just been busy doing this, busy doing that. We went on vacation a week ago, so you know. I do all kinds of stuff to prepare for that. I'm out here burning the papers and I realized I have about a couple different clips running here, so I better um I guess you can say sync them all up together to make some sense. So uh Let's see what's been done since the last time. Sorry, I'm speechless. I don't know. I'm just not into it today. <laughs> okay, so this I sprayed and is ready. I have a piece patch for that. That corner right there is sprayed and ready. I just found out that this I could probably put my finger right through that if I wanted to so we had to do some of that this is sprayed and ready to go this has been fixed a donation from the handy dandy sign department um, just some small stuff under there put the sign on top and you self tap screws and we got our board with our angle iron in. It just has to be secured. This is not exactly the uh, flattest surface, so we had to do some shifting around and we had to shave some of the top off a little bit. But it fits good, it fits snug, it fits like a glove, snug glove. Like those hospital latex shit and stuff. So that has to get anchored in. We're not really leaning toward doing the other side. There's no problems over there. And I know for long term, it might be better to do it. But I'm really, 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 really pushing to get this done for, or at least into the garage by, I think it's July 21st or something like that. I just want to get it in. I could take a summer class. My parents are going to be away on vacation up in Canada. Is it that week? I don't know. Sometime around then. And I told them, this thing's going to be on the road when you guys are gone. It could either be legal or illegal. So, <laughs> you make the call. So, we're definitely hoping to get it in by, into the garage by then. And, yeah. Which I called the garage. In Pennsylvania, you need to save all the receipts that you have that you used in materials to build your R title vehicle or trailer. So, if you're buying stuff, make sure you get a separate receipt with all the very specific items that you purchased for this. Um, even if it's not an R title vehicle, I would still do it just to have a records for ungodly knows reasons and uh, so that's about it I guess oh yeah and those back two corners those need some attention I could see a pinhole or two right in there and I know that that's weak the idea is that there's going to be a bed sitting right here, queen size, and there's going to be you know traffic coming in from the door and going around on this side more than likely. So uh, I want to make sure that that's walkable. Ain't nobody going to go through, and ain't no hole going to develop, and then I got to somehow fix that in the future. So this is solid. You can still feel where that beam is pushing up. But I mean, we did our best. We really just couldn't think of any idea of how to 
what I wanted to do was somehow put a jack on top of this thing and push it down, like forcefully push it down. You get what I'm saying? But what we ended up doing was something completely different, which that's all we were able to do and think about without injuring any part of the bus was we put a jack under here we jacked up there's i'm gonna do this without looking at the screen so forgive me if this shot is not good at all because i'm not laying on the ground in the poison ivy we had a piece of cardboard here before but all these cross beams we put a big board underneath and we jacked it up we didn't jack up that one obviously so put a jack put a board across pushed it up we kind of thought that that might get the weight off the body or the frame or whatever and then we went in there with a hammer and we tried to pound it down a little bit it went down some not a lot but what we took what we got is what we took in the story and uh, that's about it. I'm making a list of what I want the garage to do while I take it in for inspection. Uh, I just, I mean, I bought this bus off a very reliable person. They wouldn't tell me any lies. I trust them, they're a friend. But I mean, I don't want to go back and say, hey, when was the last time you had a transmission service? Hey, when was the last time, like, these tires were spoon balanced or hey when was the last alignment on it so I'm just gonna take it in tell them do all this shit get it up to par that way it's fresh I know exactly when it was done I have a receipt to prove it I know in my head I'm just gonna get it all up to service so I'm looking at an alignment I don't know if they spin balance these type of wheels but I'm gonna ask them uh, transmission service I'm gonna tell them if it needs a flush do the flush but I don't think it does because the fluid is pretty much nice and clear it's not burnt or black or nothing I don't know too much about that uh, I changed the oil myself so that's good oil filter is gonna get changed you know it's just a list of general stuff Probably gonna cost me a penny or two, but I don't really care. I just want that up to date. I know there's a local diesel mechanic that can do maybe 50% of that, while maybe the alignment. Actually, I think maybe just the alignment might have to be done by this garage because they do work on heavy, you know, 18 wheelers, tractor trailers. But this diesel mechanic over by me might be able to just do like the basic stuff. You know, he's just one of them local guys that I know does bus work, or diesel work. And it's where my friend I bought this bus off, I took it to, you know, get the brakes changed, get this done. When a tree landed on his other bus, he did it. He replaced the roof hatch for him. So, that's about it. Uh, I guess I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Also, I have a quick question for you folks. Now this was on the road a little while ago. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I live in northeastern Pennsylvania, so I mean, we have the Appalachian Rolling Mountains. I wasn't on any big mountains with it, but you know, going up and down hills, steep and not so steep. My question is, does this, do buses have transmission coolers? Like on small cars, they have little like radiator like things that the transmission's cool in but I've been looking around on this thing and I can't really find nothing like that because I was running I mean there was a point where my tranny was getting way up past almost past 220 going on to 240 and 
I was starting to get a little nervous, so I pulled over and I put it in neutral and I let it cool. But, I don't know if you could see. I don't know. Like, I looked up a chart to try and further my knowledge, and I really couldn't. I mean, it said, you know, at this temperature, things start to burn. At this temperature, uh, the clutches will burn and shit. But, like, I don't know. Do these things have a cooler? Do I need to worry about them overheating? I mean, I don't know. I don't know anything about it. I'm just worried about a transmission overheat. I don't know if somehow the coolants intertwine in the same radiator. Because I know buses have, or diesels have, one side is the radiator, which is this side. The other side is the intercooler for the turbo. And my engine was doing fine. It was staying, you know, at that 190 range. Let me make sure I double check what I'm talking about. Yeah, that transmission was almost up past 220. And the engine temp was like there just about at 210. I wasn't it wasn't even coming close to getting heated and that big I don't know if they call it a turbo fan or clutch fan, that huge fan that when you know you're going it goes it gets real loud. That wasn't on. It wasn't a hot day. I don't know. Let me know what you guys know and have from personal experience I can sure use it. But if I don't get no feedback, I'll just have to ask the garage and I take it in for inspection. Oh, and fucking this thing hasn't moved in approximately four weeks. The week before that, I was running it probably, I think it was on the road maybe four times in a week. Or at least every Friday for about three weeks. If you can keep that straight. It ran for like three or four weeks straight on a Friday. Approximately two hours and everything was good I started this thing yesterday transmission check transmission was on now that was never on before this thing was sitting here so I don't know if the sensor went off some goofy sensor I don't know but that's kind of depressing I don't know much about transmissions and I don't need this thing to freaking shit out on me that only that mileage I know the hours don't matter, but there's the hours. I don't know. We'll see. Alright, folks. That's it. Have a good one.